Hi everyone, legato means smooth and connected, as opposed to staccato, which means detached. In this video, we'll look at the common legato mistakes and how we can avoid making them. The first legato technique we'll look at is sliding. So simply where you slide from one fret to another. Now I don't need to pick the string twice for each fret, I just pick it once, and then this hand takes over and does all the work. Be careful you don't make this common mistake where people kind of drag their fingers. So their hand is moving, but the finger gets left behind. So you get this kind of dragging thing and it sounds awful. And you can hear the sixth fret on the way to the seventh. I don't really want to hear the sixth fret. I want to pass through it like that. So my finger kind of stays consistently in this stance, pushing into the wood all the way up. And of course I can reverse this seven to five. Or I could do both, seven, five, seven with only one pick like that. Now if you're doing a really big slide, I recommend you look at the destination, not the finger. So if I go from 5 to 12, people often look at the, the finger and what happens is they under slide or over slide. If you look at the fret you're going to, you'll probably find you're more likely to arrive there every time. Same in reverse, making sure you keep the pressure going into the wood. So I'm watching the destination, not the finger. Hammer-ons. A hammer-on is where you simply play one note and then hammer your finger on to get another one. Two notes for the price of one. Let's say, for example, I play the open G string and then here I hammer my middle finger on. I don't pick the string again here. I play it once and then just whack my finger on. The common mistakes I see here are people don't hammer their finger, they place it, which chokes the note like this. Now the reason they do this is they're so afraid of missing that small target. They kind of gently place the finger. You've got to be more assertive than that. Don't worry about the target, you'll hit it with practice. Just whack that finger like that. The other mistake people make is, again, to try and hit that small target. They use a bigger part of the finger, the fleshy part. But unfortunately, that sounds like this. Can you hear all those other strings ringing out? We don't want that, so use the tip of the finger like that. Also, don't feel that you have to rush this. People always think that if they don't hit the hammer on quickly, the note will somehow fizzle out. So panic like this. You can hit that string and wait all day if you want to. It's not going anywhere. In fact, I can literally not hit it at all and still get a hammer on. The next technique is pull-offs. If I take the second fret on the G string, I can get two notes for the price of one by simply pulling the string like that. What I'm not doing is I'm not violently plucking the string and I'm not just taking my finger off. I'm somewhere in between the two extremes. I'm kind of going diagonally, kind of this way. And again, you don't have to rush this. The note's not going anywhere. You can wait all day if you have to. You'll still get the note. Let's combine a hammer on and a pull off. We'll play the open G, we'll hammer the second fret, and then we'll pull it off. You can keep doing that. You could also do it here on a fretted note. Let's try the fifth fret on the G string, and we'll hammer the seven. And now we'll try the opposite, a pull off. Seven, For, to do this, by the way, you need both notes held. So we're gonna hold both notes, five and a seven on the same string. Play, and then this finger here pulls off. Not comes off, doesn't violently pluck, it's in between the two extremes. When we do string bends, it's a physical effort to really move that string. So one finger sometimes won't cut it. Here's an example, if I play the seventh fret on the G, one finger really struggles to move that. If I use three fingers, it's really easy. What I do is I bunch my fingers up together, it doesn't matter if these two are on the wrong fret, as long as the third finger is on my target fret, I'm good to go. So they all push up like this and come back. Now when I return the bend, I don't go beyond the starting point and go down like this. That sounds weird. I just let the string uh, return itself with its own tension. The pitch of the bend is very important. There's a whole bend where we bend up two frets. So here's the seventh fret. I'm gonna bend up until I hit what sounds like a nine. Or I could play a half bend, which sounds like it's going to eight. It's worth practicing hitting those pitches. Go seven to nine, seven to eight. Or you could go crazy and go seven, eight, nine, eight, seven. Now what happens if we're playing a bend with the first finger? That does happen sometimes. I might be playing a solo and have no option but to use one finger, that's perfectly fine. But what I do with that is I can either pull the string or push it, but I'm using this hand to just silence the low strings in case I should accidentally clip a string like that. I do something similar when I play three fingers for a bend. 
when I'm bending up this finger, you'll notice is slightly flatter than these two. And the reason is if I don't do that, I get this. And I clip other strings. This finger is slightly flatter and just touches the D string, thus silencing it. And this hand is resting on the low strings that I'm not playing. That's particularly important if you're playing with more gain. If I don't use the trick, I get all this extra noise. Let's put this all together. So first of all, let's try a, a legato idea that uses hammer-ons and pull-offs within the pentatonic scale. If you've never seen a pentatonic scale, I've done videos all about that, but this is what it's like. It's basically your, your first scale you ever learn, and it's the most useful one. It goes like this. So that was five to eight on the low string, then next string, five to seven. Same on the next string, same on the next string. Five, eight on the B string, five, eight. On the top here in reverse, eight five, eight five, seven five, seven five, seven five, eight five. We can play hammer-ons and pull-offs within that on any string. Let's take the G string, we'll go five to seven, and maybe pull off. We can keep going. Of course it's easier with a bit of gain. The next lick is this. You play five and hammer on seven. On the A string, then same on the D, same on the G slow or as fast as you want. So what we've got now is a couple of licks that we can join together to make a mini solo. We could go the second idea and then the first idea. We could take that first idea and try it on a different string, maybe the D or the A, or a bit stretchy. Lick number three this is the reverse of lick number two. We're gonna go seven on the G string and do a pull off. I need to hold both notes. Pull off, same on the D, same on the A. So I've got. Imagine doing the first lick and then the third one. Imagine doing the first lick and then the third. Or all three licks together. Lick number four, we're going to take this pattern that we've learned, but we're going to slightly adapt it. We're going to go like this. This is borrowing notes from what's called pattern five, sliding to pattern one, sliding into what's called pattern two, sliding into pattern three, reverse. Play it again. So what I'm doing there is I'm playing five on the bottom of each string with my third finger. Then three on the A string, five, sliding to seven. There's our first bit of legato. The D string, I'm gonna play five and seven. I can hammer that if I want. Same on the G, and maybe slide that to nine. And then eight, 10 on the B string, which I can pick or hammer on. Same on the E string, slide to 12. Let's reverse it, slide 12 to 10, then eight. Then do a pull off maybe, 10, eight on the B string. And then maybe nine slides to seven on the G, pulls off to five. That's the hardest bit, by the way, going slide and pull. Worth practicing that on its own. And then nine, seven on the D with pull off. Same on the A. Actually, no, on the A string, we go slide and we'll pull off to three and then the root note. So slide, hammer, hammer, slide, hammer, hammer, slide, slide, pull off, pull off, slide, pull off, pull off, slide, pull off. Bit again now. Let's try some common string bends. Hiding within pattern one are several notes that are particularly nice for bending. They lend themselves to it. So the seventh fret on the G string is one of them. We can bend this string up a whole tone and back. We can do the eighth fret on the B string. And we can do the eighth fret on the thin string. But let's make that a lick. So let's take the first uh, bend. Let's go seven up and down, and then we'll play five, and then the root note seven. So you've got, or we can do up, down, pull off to five, and then seven, so you've got. The next lick looks like this. What I'm doing there is I'm bending the seventh fret up, and then I don't return it, I let my right hand just silence the string as it goes to pick my next note, which is five on the B, and then five on the top E. So I've got, actually that's a lick in its own right, that's a kind of Chuck Berry-ism. Or both of those fives together. 
Anyway, this is what I was going to do with the lick. I was going to go seven, five, five, pull off eight to five on the B string, seven, five on the G, and then do a bend up on the seventh fret, and down five, seven. So bend, five, five, pull off, pull off, bend. Anyway, have fun with those licks. I hope that video was useful to you. If so, please click like and subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.